Okay, so our first enemy isn't going to be so much of an enemy as it is an obstacle. If we look over here in the assets, you'll see that I've organized things into folders. But in an enemies folder here, I have a new sprite asteroid, which is a 64 by 64 asteroid, which is centered and has precise collision checking. I also have a miscellaneous folder, and I have a sprite explosion large. We have used this sprite before, and it just cycles through like so. 64 by 64 centered, not collision, because it's not an object we interact with. And then down here I have made an object out of both of them, but before we get started with that I want to make two more objects. So I'm going to come here, make a new object, I'm going to call this obj underscore super parent. It's not going to be visible. Click OK, and then I'm going to make one more and I'm going to call this obj underscore enemy underscore parent and then not visible and I'm going to give this the parent of the object super parent. Click OK. I'm actually going to drag the enemy parent object into the enemies folder and then I'm going to open up the object asteroid. This object has the sprite asteroid, is visible I'm going to give it a depth of 5 so it appears below most of the other sprites and I'm going to give it the parent of the object enemy parent. I'm going to be using parents a lot in this game so that I can have multiple objects affected by just calling the one object. But the asteroid is pretty simple, we just need to add a create event and we just need it to move towards the player. So let's come over to move, move fixed, bring that over, the direction will be to the left and the speed I'm going to give it is a random speed. We'll use the choose function that we did in the previous game. Choose, open parentheses, I'm going to say 3, comma, 4, comma, 5, close parentheses. And so when this is created, it will start moving at a random speed, either 3, 4, or 5 pixels. It'll just add a little bit of variety to the game. So hit OK, and close the asteroid. And we may as well take care of the explosion while we're at it. It's very simple, so open that up. And all we need it to do is disappear when it's done playing. So add event, other, animation end, come over to main one, and tell it to destroy itself. That's it. Now, that asteroid is going to move to the left forever because we didn't tell it to destroy itself when it goes off screen. So let's do that, but not in the object asteroid. Let's do it via the parent. So open up the object enemy parent and we will add event, other, outside room, come to main one and tell it to destroy itself. Okay. And then what we're going to do is make it so that we can shoot down these asteroids. So let's open up the object player laser. And we are going to add a collision event with the object enemy parent. Because we're setting this up with a parent, as soon as we get this working, we'll be able to shoot down every enemy that we add to the game from now on. So let's come over to main one, choose destroy instance. We want to destroy the other, meaning the enemy parent, so all enemies. Click OK. Then we need to create that explosion, so come to Create Instance, drag that underneath. Create an instance of our object explosion. Apply this to the other, so that it goes to the origin points of the enemy parent. Hit Relative. Click OK. And then finally we want the laser to destroy itself rather than just pass on through. So bring another destroy instance, make sure this one applies to the self, click OK. And now we should be able to shoot down some asteroids, but first we need to add them to our room. So open up the room, zoom out just a little bit, and let's select the object asteroid. And I'm going to add a couple of them to the room, and each one should choose a random speed. We'll set them up evenly so that uh, we can see where they go right out of the gate. Hit the check mark and let's see it happen. Okay, sure enough they're moving at a different speed and we shoot and they blow up. Okay. Now the asteroids can't hurt 
us because I haven't set that up yet. I'm actually going to wait so that we can do something special when the player gets hurt. So for now, let's just move on and add a second enemy to our game.